ultimate game in Pool A between Ireland and Great Britain. Both sides hoping to register their first win of the competition ahead of the classification playoff matches. It's the hottest it's been so far at these Rio 2016 Paralympic Games. Humidity has dipped, but the temperature is soaring. Perhaps not the day for high tempo football, but high pressure is inevitable here. Iran top Pool B, we know that they've won all three matches and have nine points. Then it's the Netherlands on four points. The USA currently have one and Argentina none. The USA will reach the semi-finals with a three goal win in this match or if they score at least three and win by two. If they win 2-0, then they and the Dutch will draw lots for a place in the semi-finals. It's that tight. Any other win or a draw, and the USA will be in the fifth and sixth place match. If Argentina win, then the USA will play off for seventh and eighth. So it's everything to play for here. Argentina can't reach the semi-finals. At the Paralympic Games, there's always pride to play for at the very least. So the final match in Pool B. Argentina have had two two goal defeats. And wouldn't argue really with either against the Iran team and uh, the Netherlands. That first match the USA played looks more and more crucial by the second. They got a last gasp equaliser in that game through Adam Ballou. And that's given them a chance, really, of getting to the semi-finals here. For what would be only the second time in football seven aside at the Paralympic Games. They did so on home soil in Atlanta. That was 20 years ago. And not many were expecting them to achieve the same here. But they've played well in both matches, in truth, and had uh, chances to be much closer to Iran than they were in the end. Struck the frame of the goal on three occasions in that match and ended up losing by two goals to nil. The anthems before we start. That of Argentina will hear first before the American anthem.
Estados Unidos da América. So opportunity knocks for the USA. Can they score the goals required to get a victory over Argentina and take them past the Netherlands on goal difference into the semi-finals? These two sets of players know one another pretty well. At the World Championship last year, they contested the seventh and eighth place playoff. The US won by four goals to one on that occasion. And then at the pre-Paralympic event earlier this year, the US came from 3-1 down to win 4-3. So they'll be confident of achieving the right result. But can they get the balance right between attack and defense today? Here's the Argentina lineup. Three changes to the side that began the match against the Netherlands, which they lost by two goals to nil. The goalkeeper Nahelkin returns. Luquez is into the defence, and Morana is back as well. The number eight, Figuera, Carrizo, and Bassi drop down to the bench. Claudia Figuera, the uh, number 12 there is the reserve goalkeeper, but also played outfield in their opening match. And that makes him unique in this Football 7-a-side tournament. The US team shows one change from the side that began their 2-0 loss to Iran. Tyler Bennett returns the number four in for Gavin Sabayan. They actually have a couple of players injured to the USA. So their squad is reduced in size for today's purposes from 14 to 12. Mason Nabiati and David Garza are unavailable, hence there are five names on the bench and not the usual seven. You can see the crutches there next to David Garza. Garza broke his foot in the opening match and uh, played for more than half an hour still with that injury. He'll be nervous inside, Stuart Sharp. He's a cool customer. But what a chance. The USA know that a three-goal margin of victory will take them into the semi-finals here against Argentina. What a chance for them. The Americans in the white, Argentina in the dark blue. Can the US sneak past the Netherlands on goal difference and make it into the last four, give themselves a couple of chances at a Paralympic medal? And these sweltering conditions, too. Here's Morana for Argentina. An early sighter of Sean Boyle's goal. Never going to trouble Boyle from that kind of range. Boyle is one of two American players on yellow cards 
the other is the player on the ball now or rather it's Kevin Hensley the captain further forward here's Josh Brunet now Tyler Bennett in towards Hensley might come towards Balu. Argentina too have a couple of players at risk of a suspension in Luquez and Morana. Argentina know they can't reach the semi-finals but if they're able to win this match then they will go into the fifth and sixth place playoff as opposed to that for seventh and eighth. Forward by Bremer. Balu who got uh, the two American goals in their opening match against the Netherlands and he's making progress here referees playing an advantage that was a foul but here's Lou Green who had an excellent game for Argentina the captain in their last match now Fernandez Romano referee saw the appeal for handball but played on and that should be an American throw Drew Bremer perhaps slightly fortunate to get away with that. Jan has a tremendous long throw for the US. Well dealt with by Morana in the air for Argentina. Straight back. Jan was the target. No offside in this form of football seven aside. Hensley. And he struck it pretty sweetly. And there were plenty of players between him and the goalkeeper so it might have been awkward had he found the target all got away from Lou Green there and Hensley almost threaded the pass through for Seth Yarn Here's Hensley's strike a few minutes ago. No tie today for the Argentina coach. It's not that kind of day. Stuart Sharp, the American coach, took Scotland to number six in the world in his previous coaching job. He's getting great improvement from this USA team as well. It's the fifth time they've played in Paralympic seven-a-side competition. The US, on four of those five occasions, they finished last of the competing teams. The only exception was Atlanta in 1996 when they got to the semi-finals. But a loss to Spain in the bronze medal match eventually. Argentina have never won a medal either in Paralympic seven-a-side football. is Mariano Morana for Argentina. Now Lou Green. Back to Pablo Molina Lopez. Wasn't a bad ball in, but Fernandez Romero 
couldn't turn on it. Now, Seth Yarn is a useful man at holding the ball up. And he's found the pass to Brunei. Well, now Helkin seemed to have that covered. But a good combination there between the two former US military men. And great friends, Seth Yarn and Josh Brunei. Here's Brunei again, looking towards Jan. Seven aside football at the Paralympic Games for athletes with cerebral palsy, some who've had a stroke or a traumatic brain injury. They all have uh, coordination impairments, which is why from throw-ins, players are allowed to roll the ball in one-handed, underarm if they want, or they can take a, a more conventional 11-a-side style throw-in. Here's Morana. That was useful. Good control by Brunei at the back post. Couldn't afford to make a mistake there. Again, it's up towards Jan, who can hold it up. Brunei back towards Jan. Balu is waiting in the centre here. Jan had seen him well. And uh, Balu committing the foul. Some promise for the US on the counter attack, all coming from that link man job that Seth Jan is performing. No complaints about the free kick, I don't think. Players are all classed according to their impairments between five and eight. Five the most impaired, eight the least. You're only allowed any a one player from class eight on the field at any one time. But you have to have at least one from class five or six. Hensley just caught napping by Fernandez Romano. Hensley tidying up for the US. And again, up to Jan coming towards the ball. Splendid skill too. Here's Brunei. Lots of space. Can he find the right pass? Not this time. Crowd in Brazil always love a little piece of individual skill. Oh, Tyler Bennett a little bit unfortunate to give away the foul there. He read the play well. Morana. Hensley in the way. Ten minutes gone, neither side has had a shot on target yet. Here's Morana. Now Lou Green. Lina Lopez, it opened up for him. Here's Le Green. Just as well for the US that Adam Ballou got a, a boot to that. <laughs> Some harsh words for the defenders from Sean Boyle, the goalkeeper. 
Not so sure there should have been that much space in central positions. Lucas did well to fend off Jan there. He's a muscular player, Seth Jan. Well suited to that role. Morana. Jan away from Lucas again here for the US. What support has he got? He's sensible to wait for it. And he couldn't pick out Hensley, who was just arriving. Argentina, five blue shirts back there, made it difficult. As a consequence, there's not much in front of Lugrin. Here's Molina Lopez. Now Lugrin again. Fernandez Romano is in the centre. Lugrin. Hensley came in well. And now Brunet with a little bit of space, looking up towards Jan. And Jan pulled away to try and create some space for Brunet, but he was well shepherded by the defender. It's Mariano Morana who's back there. Argentina's class eight player. Hensley is the American player in that category. The least impaired of the four categories. Morana, searching pass. Well, Brunet left a foot in. And slightly risky challenge, first of all, on Fernandez Romano, because if he'd taken the ball cleanly then and gone away from the tackle of Brunet, we could have been in penalty territory. Bremen looking for Jan again. Out by Lucas. Bremen might as well move forward with it. Tyler Bennett with a corner for the US. Out by Molina Lopez. Alou. Well, they haven't really created a, a golden chance yet. The Americans, same goes for Argentina. Both sides are, are playing the odds, keeping plenty behind the ball, looking to play on the counter. That's why it's nil-nil at the midway point of the first half. Morana. Boyle had to be clean with the handling. Feels like an ambitious shot, but when there's no offside, players can get right in close to the goalkeeper and try and get a touch on the shot or get really close in to pick up any rebounds. So it can be a productive tactic as long as the shot is close enough to goal in the first place. Well, this is the first time we've had a a break for rehydration, but that just goes to prove just how hot the temperature is. You can hear the 
PA announcer saying 37 degrees down there on the pitch. So highly sensible to take a, a little break. Of course, the coaches will use it too to get a, a few tactical instructions out there too. And I guess what it means for an American audience is that the match is divided into four quarters, which is <laughs> familiar territory. The heat is playing a part in this. It's, it's a fairly low tempo match. Both sides playing it fairly cautious. Dutch supporters are watching on as well. It's crucial to their side's hopes. If the USA don't win, then the Dutch will take the second semi-final place behind Iran in this pool. If the USA win by a single goal, the same is true. 2-0 is the magic scoreline. If USA win 2-0 against Argentina here, then they'll toss a coin or draw lots because the uh, Netherlands and the Americans will have identical records. The head-to-head -head record is the same. They drew 2-2. So For the US, 3-1 is good enough, but 2-0 means 50-50 chance. This is in Seth Yarn range, so once again, it'll be the long throw. Hensley and Balu making their way into the penalty area. Bennett lurking just outside. It's an extraordinary weapon that he's got. Five back defending it. Morana made a really good clearing header for Argentina. That's two aerial balls that he's won. Is Drew Bremer. A little bit of space for Maximiliano Fernandez. Green against Hensley. Hensley too strong. So Argentina nil, USA nil. And they've played coming up the 20 minutes of the opening half. Josh Brunet for the Americans here. That'll be a corner. That pretty well. Seemed to be on target too. Bennett with the corner. This time Molina Lopez gets it away. Argentina have had the better in the air so far. The boot was too high though. And this is a free kick to the United States. Fernandez Romano penalised there. that Ballou is trying to get in the wall suggests that Hensley is thinking about trying to bend a shot around it. Maybe that's the impression they're trying to give. 
Jan is waiting on the corner of the goal area. And he was trying to pick up the pieces from that. Good goalkeeping from Nahel Kuhn. Making sure it went away from the lurking forward. Don't take any chances. Bennett with the corner. This time it's a good one. And the Argentina goalkeeper forced to make his first decent save. Hensley was in there. And this time there was nobody around to poach the loose ball in the goalkeeper's area. Jan again with a long throw. Morana with another good clearing header. American players retreated quickly and got into their shape. There's no real chance of a productive counter-attack there for Argentina. And they're reduced to striking from long, long range in the shape of Luquez. Here's the chance from the corner. Hensley's volley down. I've just seen it a little bit late now, Halkin. Argentina nil, USA nil. Hensley's effort, perhaps the best we've seen so far. It's not been a game of, of many chances yet. Hasn't been particularly open. It's extremely hot. Stakes very high, of course, for the American team as well. All that's combined to make it uh, very close and not especially expansive at the moment. Osvaldo Hernandez is the Argentina coach. He's been head coach for the last five years. is Bremer. That'll be another American corner. Fifth corner of the game for the USA. Balu takes it, Marana again. He is their best header of a ball. The American corners have got to go into areas that he is not guarding. Same applies to the long throw. If they choose to take that option. Ballou in the centre, so too is Hensley. Jan. Oh, it was well done! And Hensley's turned it in! The first step towards a potential semi-final place. They need another, but the first one's always a vital one. And the USA captain, Kevin Hensley, just got the final touch. Scrappy but it means the world. Goal timed in the 25th minute. As things stand, the Netherlands will still qualify for the semi-finals in second place in Pool B. 
But one more for the USA team, and it starts to get very interesting. Melina Lopez with a good flick. Fernandez Romano. Bremer staying close, did a good job. Crucial thing on the shot from Jan, which was again a cross come shot, was to get it hard and low and on target. And then the goalkeeper is struggling because there were players right in front who could get a touch, and Hensley was the one who did. Lou Green was with him. He's claiming it, he's claiming it, Hensley, that's for sure. Lou Green will take it for Argentina. Safety first from Boyle. Well, to what extent will that American goal just open up the game a little bit if Argentina are, are forced to push on? Only a victory is good enough for Argentina to move ahead of the Americans in the rankings. Jan's long throw, Hensley was up again. Hensley on to Balou. Hensley forced to do some chasing back now. The green to Lucas. Brunet with a tackle, that was perfectly timed. Textbook slide from Josh Brunet, and then he got a little overexcited with the pass. Reminder, it's Argentina nil, USA one, if you are just tuning in. We're in the closing stages of the first half. Kevin Hensley with a goal for the United States a short time ago. Morana. Good touch by Balu. Sweltering heat out there. Lucas. Out to Fernandez. Mariano Morana. Molina Lopez. US defense is quite deep here. And they've paid for it. Maximiliano Fernandez with the equalizer for Argentina. Stunning blow for the States. But huge pleasure for Argentina, who square the match up just before half time at a goal apiece. The US had just sat in. And that meant when the shot came in. But Fernandez was close to goal. Added on time at the end of the first half. Morana away from Hensley here. Le Green. Molina Lopez. And it came off Bremer and over the top. Well, we can't have now the drawing of lots to see who goes into the semi-finals. It's simple. The US have to win by two or they'll go into the classification playoffs. He just stole in round the back of Josh Brunet and nothing that Sean Boyle could do. It. 
out by Brunet. Morana calling for it at the far post. Jan's earned the free kick for the challenge by Lucas. Seconds left in the first half. And that Argentina goal, of course, is good news for the Netherlands. Their total of four points would only be matched by the Americans if they win the game. With a score at 1-1, of course, they can't do that. That'll do for the first half an hour. And Argentina back on terms at the end of the first period. A period in which the American team had the better of it without creating a huge number of chances. But Kevin Hensley turned in Seth Jan's shot with five minutes to go before half time. Argentina, though, had the response. And uh, Fernandez with a similar goal. Equalising on the stroke of half-time. So it's still all to do for the USA. Half-time score is Argentina 1, United States of America 1. Really hot conditions, and that combined with the tension, I think, is making it a difficult game to manage for both sets of players. A lot of those Argentina shots on goal have been ambitious from long range, haven't really tested Sean Boyle. But equally, it was only the Hensley volley from the corner shortly before he scored. That you'd say was a clear chance for the US. It's been quite tight, quite tense, and exhausting for the players in intense heat at the Diodoro Stadium. And a real blow for the Americans who needed to win by two to have that equalizing goal go in so soon before half time. They need to go again, they need two more. Everything possible though, and if you're a neutral with the USA forced to go chasing the game, it should make for an interesting second half. I think the use of substitutions is going to be crucial because both teams are going to need fresh players out there in the sapping heat. And it's bound to get a little bit more open as time ticks by. No wind to cool the players down at all today. Often we get a breeze in at the Diodoro Stadium. It sweeps in across the field of play, but it's there's no escape from the heat today. Comfortable enough for Sean Boyle from uh, Matthias Fernandez Romano early on. Here's the Hensley volley. That was a, a decent chance. He didn't make perfect contact on it, nor was it the most comfortable save. The goal, Jan drills it in, and Hensley just able to provide the all-important touch. Key thing was it came in with pace, and it came in low from Jan. Defender's nightmare, really. And a huge moment for the captain. And then... So soon after that, Molina Lopez with a cross shot from long range. And in similar circumstances, really, Maximiliano Fernandez stealing in to score. All to play for. The USA need two more goals in the second half to reach the semi finals. It's 1 1 at half time.
So with the halftime score 1-1, the situation is very clear. If the USA wants to reach the semi-finals, they must win by two goals or the Netherlands will go into the semi-finals instead. If Argentina win, they will move above USA in the Pool B table and finish third and therefore play off for fifth and sixth in their next match. And the USA would play off for seventh and eighth. Playing a patient game in the first half, the Americans. And so the defensive laps saw Argentina equalize just before half time. Until that point, it was really going completely to plan, I think, for Stuart Sharp and his players. I'm sure there'll come a point at which uh, they'll have to throw caution to the wind. As a result, from a neutral perspective, the second half could be fascinating. Because they may have to leave gaps at the back in search of further goals. Ross Haswell from Great Britain who is uh, <laughs> there's a space in the squad somewhere he's ready to take it Neither goalkeeper's been especially busy in the first half. Wasn't one of those great end-to-end -end games that we've seen. And again, the hot weather's more than played its part in that. A couple of the locals wondering what all the fuss is about. Argentina really are taking their time to come out for the start of the second half. The Americans have been out in the heat for quite a while. The refereeing team are waiting too, which does suggest the Argentina team are a little late. When you think of the results that the USA team had in London 2012, losing heavily in all three pool matches, they really have been superbly competitive here. I'm sure that remark to the team would sound patronizing. Having beaten Argentina recently a couple of times in the last 12 months, they'd have been optimistic of winning this fixture. And with the point that they secured against the Netherlands, I think they realized they had a chance to, uh, to reach the semi-finals. Here they come belatedly. I'm sure it's much nicer in the the cool and the shade of the uh, dressing rooms. Argentina's goal scorer, Maximilio Fernandez. Neat opportunist finish from uh, the cross shot from Pablo Molina Lopez.
somebody struck a shot so powerfully that there's a piece of goal net that uh, just broken there but Back out they emerge into the glare of the sun. And into the spotlight too. So will it be the Netherlands or will it be the USA who end up as the second team from Pool B and reaching the semi-finals? Half an hour to find out. No changes at half time from either coach. Both coaches uh, get a maximum of three. Brunei with a foul right at the start of the second half. You'll have to retreat seven meters from the point at which the free kick is taken. Lucas takes. It was Lou Green who uh, hit the deck inside the penalty area. Here's Hensley, the American captain. Back to Jan. Drew Bremer. Difficult ball for Balu to control. Fired at him. Pressure from Hensley has forced the turnover. Jan just got his wires crossed there with Bennett on the far side. Morana for Argentina. Disappointing end to an Argentina attack. Only managed a combined total of 18 shots in their first two games, Argentina. Bremer with the through ball, looking for Hensley. Oh, it's come to Bennett. Decided to go for the shot first time. Might have been able to take a touch. Lucas with the ball in. Oh, it's useful. The green is in. Sean Boyle had to make the save. Molina Lopez <laughs> went for the spectacular chip. But there was disorganization at the back there for the US, and Sean Boyle made a terrific intervention. He was really swiftly off his line.
Brunei has got a lot of space here. Argentina have fallen asleep. And the cross is just too high for Jan. Well, it was a beautifully floated ball into Lou Green. His first touch wasn't perfect, but still, the speed off the line was critical from Boyle. Certain touch of the showman from Melina Lopez about the attempted finish, which was nice to witness. I think with two defenders back on the goal line as well, it would had to have been quite an extraordinary finish to have ended up in the uh, American net. Hensley. Lou with the corner for the USA into Hensley again and he's frustrated he moved away from his marker he had space there to judge the header he's a better player in the air than that Kevin Hensley Again, Lou Green is the target. Morana. Morano into space here. Well, it just seemed to bobble up. And hence, maybe the shot was sliced over the crossbar. But Drew Bremer knew he was in trouble. Jan. Couldn't pick out Bennett. Molina Lopez forward towards Lou Green again. Brunei saw that coming and stepped out of defence well as he has on a few occasions. Lucas fully committed to the tackle. Lou Green, Hensley had a bit of a pull back at him there and that's why the free kick's been given. He'd been turned, he was wrong side. Free kick to Argentina. He's the youngest player in the Argentinian seven, Lou Green, but he's the captain. And that tells you what they think of him. Here was the, the stiff challenge from Lucas. Now it's a long way out for the shot, but again, we've seen goals turned in from close range. Players have to be tightly marked in that three and a half meter goal area. Le Green and Fernandez are trying to get into poaching positions here. Marana takes. It might have been going wide anyway. Now well, Sean Boyle took took no chance. Towards Morana. That was a terrific defensive header by Brunei. Because Morana was getting into a good position. USA team need to win by two clear goals to get into the semi-finals of this Paralympic football seven-a-side tournament. Here's Seth Yarn. First time we've seen anybody on the American coaching bench getting a little agitated. They thought the throw-in should have gone to the US. As the 
clock ticks down, we might see more and more of that. This is the goal scorer, Maximiliano Fernandez, who's in need of uh, some treatment here. And Mariano Cortez is going to come on. Twenty-one-year-old who played the whole game against uh, Iran at the start of the competition. Great ovation for Fernandez, who scored a, an important goal. A goal that the Dutch players might well want to thank him for. As things stand. The Dutch are going to finish second in Pool B and will be in the semi-finals. Here's Morana for Argentina. He's a danger man. Oh, he stung that shot in. Good save by Boyle. But it was fizzing from Morana. USA living a bit dangerously at the moment. Cortez, who's just come on, who was closest to making the header. Here's Brunet. Well, he's felt the brunt of a couple of pretty stiff tackles. That was Fernandez Romano. <laughs> Here's Hensley. Jan is at the far post. It's a goal kick according to the assistant referee. I think they got that one right, certainly. Not much is happening for the American team in this second half at the moment. They're the ones who have the chance of reaching the semi-finals for Argentina after two defeats. The best they can do is the fifth and sixth place playoff. To get into that match, they have to win here. But it's the USA who can still dream of winning a medal at these Paralympic Games. That was a foul. Yeah, Fernandez Romano in the back of uh, Balu. Is Cortez. Well, intercepted by Baloo, but he's lost it. Brunei flying in. So far, so good for the Dutch supporters. Their team is heading to the semi finals, unless the American side can get at least a couple of goals in the next 16 and a half minutes. Hensley had a grab at the shirt of Morana there. Le Green. Too strong for Bennett. Nice pass into Morana. Well, again, Hensley had a little grab at Morana. Not enough for the officials, but they were taking a chance there, the Americans. Argentina have been better in this second half. Here's Molina Lopez. 
Lovely piece of skill. Luke Green. Well, he hit it well. Sean Boyle's goal is uh, coming under sustained pressure. Good touch by Le Green inside Bremer, and he stepped across his man. Le Green is causing all manner of problems. It was a block, I think it was just outside the penalty area. Meticulous in his organization, Sean Boyle. They can't afford to concede one now. Le Green. All did its job, and Bennett has the chance to clear here. Now Brunet, the goalkeeper's right out. Well, the referee has whistled here. I think the Americans wanted to take a quick throw in but the, <laughs> the referee has called for the refreshment break midway through the second half that's a little unfortunate because with the goalkeeper scampering back towards goal they they could have made the most of that that situation they're not grateful for the timing and that's what i think stuart sharp is saying to rafael torres no doubting that the players are in need of cooling down, but he's not, he's not pleased at all. Well, he's made his point in as gentlemanly a manner as he, as he could. There's no disguising the agitation, though, on the usually very sanguine USA coach, Stuart Sharp. hottest day we've had here at the Diodoro Stadium during the football seven aside so hot that uh, the officials have instigated a one minute break midway through both halves so the players can get refreshment so the Argentina defense <laughs> although this wasn't the intention has had plenty of time to get itself reorganized Jan won't go for the long throw instead it goes into Balu Maybe this time they will hurl it into the uh, Argentina penalty area. Last 12 minutes, USA need to win by two. Bremer, that's useful. Ooh, Hensley attacked it. He was under pressure, but a half a chance for the American captain. They can go quite direct, the USA. They have some good ball players, but equally they can pose a threat aerially. And from those long throws from Seth Yarn, another super tackle by Josh Brunet. He tried to hit Seth Yarn instantly with the the long pass up there. Ballou is with him. Could have been a free kick if the referee had not chosen to play an advantage. Back to Yarn again. 
USA corner is the result. It's one last big effort from the Americans. They did come back from 3-1 down to beat Argentina 4-3 when they met in May. A lose corner. Jan was there. Well, I wondered if the corner had gone out of play before Jan could get to it, but apparently not. Last 10 minutes. Balu. Oh. Just the arm up from Lucas on Hensley. Not many referees would give a penalty for this, but um, yeah, he went down a little optimistically there. As it stands, Iran top the group with nine points. That won't change. Netherlands with four. It stays 1-1. USA two points. Argentina one point. The Americans must win to get up to four points and then win by two goals. And they'll overtake the Netherlands on goals scored. It's Cortez lifting it in towards Morana, who was unmarked for a while. Brunet did a super job again. Molina Lopez, good clearance by Bremer. Well, he hasn't made a change yet, Stuart Sharp. He brings on Stephen Bowman and have to take Kevin Hensley off because they're both class eight players. With Mason Abiati injured, the young forward isn't available to him and he needs goals. Morana, super skill. Out by Hensley. Out by Brunet again, just wouldn't run for Bremer. Now through the centre to Jan, and there's no offside. Jan is in, and Jan has scored! <laughs> Little over seven minutes to get one more goal. The USA still have a chance of the semi-finals. Now, Hell Queen probably should have kept it out but nobody in white cares at all and now a nervous last seven minutes for the Netherlands one more goal will do it the counter-attack and Jan all on his own elected to go early with the shot and it was a good decision now then we're in for a grandstand finish when it looked like Argentina were, were the more likely to score in this second half. Hensley over the top for Jan again. Goalkeeper's coming. Oh, Jan got away from him. The goal's empty. Seth Jan! What a glorious chance. Well, Ballou was screaming for it in the middle, but Jan simply has to score himself. He'd done the hard part. Beats the defender. Oh, goodness.
comes to Jan again, on to Balu. All of a sudden, it's open right out. And maybe there will be more chances for the Americans. Jan's long throw. In goes Hensley. Well, he, he got his head on the ball, but there was an awful crack of heads in there too. Got it low to the side of the goalkeeper to make it 2-1. And they loved it on the American bench, but seconds later, Jan had that glorious opportunity to make it 3-1. And 3-1's the magic scoreline. That would take them through. It's hard when you're talking about military veterans to compare the pressure of a Paralympic football tournament to anything they've gone through in their working lives. And to talk about regrets. But he'll be thinking about that miss now, that's for sure. Molina Lopez, four minutes to go. Oh, it's a super ball in. And Matthias Bassi, who's just come on with a good headed chance. I think we can be guaranteed that the last few minutes are going to be end to end here. On by Jan. Hensley. Here comes Balu. Bassi got in there with the clearance. He wants a free kick. He's not going to get it. Last three minutes. In it goes to Hensley. Referee saw a push. Just a little arm on the shoulder from Hensley on Bassey. Coach desperately trying to get instructions on to his players. He's not going to make a change. I don't think uh, Stuart Sharp is going to stick with the seven that began the game. Here's Bassey. Argentina need two goals if they're going to finish above the states in the group. Here's a chance. Oh, Boyle spilt it. Cortez it was. Good job for the States. There was nobody following up. Here's Bassi. Brunet's challenge straight to Lou Green. And that seemed to skip up off the grass as well. Well, they're living dangerously, the Americans, but they have to, really. Bassi away from Balu. Bassi. Oh, good save. Desperate to keep it in. Not just because it's an Argentina corner, but because this will take time off the clock. As things stand, the Dutch going through on goal difference. But if the USA score once, they'll be in the semi-finals. Probably going wide anyway. But you don't want to make a key mistake at, at this time of such an important game. Cortez for Argentina. Morana, or rather, uh, Bassi was coming in with a late run. Neat header by Bassi onto Luke Green. It's two on one here. And Boyle made the save. 
It's all at the wrong end for the Americans, but that still might be vital. Throw into USA. There will be some time added on. What a chance this was for Le Green. He went for the near post. It's a super save. Bowman is going to come on for added on time. Hensley got the United States first goal. But things got complicated when Fernandez equalised. Well, Bowman has one job and it's to make himself a hero. Six minutes to be added on. We had the one minute break for refreshments. But six minutes is an awful lot. You can almost afford to be patient here for, for the American team. There's so long to go. Jan. It's really good defending by Lucas. He absolutely had to make that. Another long throw from Jan. Bowman's the target this time. Ballou is there. And he's it's put in by Bowman. It won't count. It won't count. The referee said the goalkeeper had a hand on the ball. And he's penalised the US team for a foul. Ballou with the initial challenge, there was nothing wrong there. Maybe he just felt Ballou on the ground. Got into Nahel Queen too much. Stuart Sharp thought it was going to count for a glorious second. Cortez. It's a Super Bowl, Bassi. Terrific control. Le Green is there. 2-2, and that should put the Netherlands into the semi-finals at the expense of this brave American team. At one end, they thought they'd scored the crucial goal. Seconds later, it's gone against them. Well, the Dutch team can breathe now. Three and a half minutes have added on time to go, yes, but the Americans have to score another two goals. It's terrific composure from Bassi, did everything right. And it's 2-2. Jan up with Balou, and Bowman is arriving as well. He has to play the pass. Oh, and he's overplayed it. Now, what will Seth Jan be thinking with that open goal that he missed when the score was 2 1? Yes, you can look at the refereeing decisions, but you have to look at yourselves first. That was a glorious opportunity. Bassi. Well, if Argentina score again, they will end up above the USA in the table and will play off for fifth and sixth place and leave the Americans battling for seventh. The line between success and defeat is uh, a thin one here. Bowman, still a couple of minutes. Forward by Bremer. And the pattern of the game is just completely different as both sides go for a winning goal. Le Green with a chance for Argentina. He's got two with him. 
And he chose not to pass at all. Well, their semi-final chance has gone now. It would sting all the more if they lost the game. Argentina sensing a chance against a team that may be slightly demoralised. And Boyle's dropped that, it's gone in. It is 3-2. And Argentina might just have won it. In the 65th minute. And look what it means to them. The Dutch are in the semi-finals. And the USA, after all this, are going to finish bottom of the group. And that feels like a poor reward for them. Cortez with the turn. And a well-struck shot. And Sean Boyle couldn't keep it out. Fernandez Romano got right in front of him and made it tremendously difficult. Balu. Whoa, the goalkeeper fell on that well. And he's going to try and uh, take a few seconds off the clock here. I don't think he's badly hurt. Good effort on the flick from Baloo, and he took a bit of a crack at the goalkeeper. It's over, and Argentina have won an extraordinary game. What a chance he missed at 2-1 to put the USA potentially in the semi-finals. But as it is, Argentina have won the game, and they will play off for fifth and sixth. The Dutch are in the semi-finals. Well, a couple of calls went against the USA team and Stuart Sharp is still debating those. But he can have that argument all night long and it won't change a thing. They've contributed hugely to this competition, the US team. And right down to the closing seconds, they still felt they had a chance of a semi-final berth. That was the call. Did Balu foul, foul the goalkeeper? Would have made it 3-1 to the States. As it was, Le Green went down the other end, scored the equaliser at 2-2. And then Cortez with the winning goal. Well, an extraordinary ending. 